calculate the mean effective pressure. So we have P sub M is equal to W net divided by V sub PD. So we have 103, 1039 kilonewton meters per kilogram. So rather than kilojoules, I wrote it as kilonewton meters. Here we have 0 0.753 cubic meters per kilogram. So the kilograms cancel, and we end up with that P sub M is equal to 1380 kPa. So we're able to find out, and as you may or may not remember, the mean effect of pressure is basically, I'm making this longer, so if I take this, what I'm doing is, if this is W net, this is W net, and this is P sub M. So the mean effect of pressure is an artificial pressure. It's basically the ordinate when I make the W net or rectangle. Now let's look at some extensions for this. So we had this problem, but now let's change it. So we went through and we did this per unit mass, but now let's say if we have had a board and a stroke with six cylinders, RPM, let's find the power. So I'll have four inch stroke, 10 centimeters, by 12 centimeters, we'll have six cylinders, 2,000 RPM, and we want to find the power. So what we, what we end up doing, so just in terms of the strategy, the work per cycle, the work uh, per cycle, is equal to the mass times this W net. So what we found per cycle, which is W net. So what I look at is I found W net already. If I find the mass of air, because I now have what the piston displacement is and all that, I can solve for W net. That's the work per cycle times the cycles per second gives us the power. And so that's the strategy that we'll use. And so V sub PD is pi over 4 D squared L times 6 is equal to pi over 4 D is 0 0.1 squared. We have to use meters, not centimeters, times L, 0 0.12, times six cylinders. And so V sub PD is equal to 0 0.205655 cubic meters. So now I have, this is the engine displacement that we have, it's 5.6 liters and so I know the specific volume, we found this, was 0 0.753. So the mass is equal to V sub PD divided by the specific volume. So that's equal to, and you can divide this. I'll just put down the answer. 0 0.20751 kilograms. So that gives me the mass. And so W net is equal to the mass 0 0.00751 times little W net 1039, or W net per cycle is equal to 7.8 kilojoules per cycle. And now what I need to do is multiply it by the cycles per second. So W dot net is W net times N cycles per second. Now 
We have 7.8 times 2,000 over 60. 60 seconds per minute, and we end up with that W dot net is equal to 260 kW. So that gives me what the power is. Okay? So when I looked at this, so I can do this, we take the actual engine size. The actual engine size enables us to find the mass of air that we would have in there, and then we move from a unit mass basis to a total basis, and that's what we're looking at. Now what I thought we would do is look at the availability of the heat going in, the heat going out, and what's going on from an availability perspective. So we saw that the, the heat out was at a high temperature. So I had the heat out was here at 1400 something, and here it's at 300. So I'm, uh, there's an availability uh, associated with the heat out. So let's look and see what that is. So if I look at the availability from four to one, it's a closed system. So this is chapter nine, U4 minus U1, plus delta KE plus delta PE, all of which are going to be zero, plus P0, V4 minus V1, which is zero, minus T0, S4 minus S1. So we're going to get rid of a lot of terms here. So this goes out, this goes out, and that goes out. And so we're left with delta U and S4 minus S1. So U4 minus U1 is M C sub B T4 minus T1. So I know the M is 0 0.00751 times C sub B 7176, oops, I'm running out of space, times 1416.2 minus 300 times this thing. And so with that, I have U4 minus U1 is equal to 6.0154 kilojoules per second. And now I'm going to calculate the change of entropy from 4 to 1. So S4 minus S1 is equal to MC sub B, the log of T4 over T1, plus MR log of V4 over V1. And the volumes are constant, so this term goes away. And so I can evaluate S4 minus S1. So S4 minus S1 is equal to the mass, 0 0.00751 times the log, oops, times C sub A, 0 0.7176 times the log, of 1416.2 over 300. And so we get S4 minus S1 is equal to 0 0.00837. And T0, S4 minus S1, is equal to 300 times delta S is equal to 2.51. And so I get that A4 minus A1, when I add these together, 6.02, I just, I rounded that off to make life easier, minus 2.51 is equal to 3.51 kilojoules per second. So when I look at the heat out, of the heat out, this is the availability or the work potential of the heat out modeling what we had for the exhaust stroke. And now what I want to do is do the same thing for the heat in and look at the availability 
of the energy that we added, and then we'll look at this work potential and how well that work potential was used and where it went to. So if I look at the heat in is from two to three. So if I look at A3 minus A2 is equal to U3 minus U2 plus the delta Ke plus the delta Pe plus the P0 del B minus T0 del S. And so we again get rid of the delta Ke, delta Pe, and the P0 delta V. And we need to evaluate S3 minus S2 is equal to M C sub B log of T3 over T2 plus M R log of V3 over V2. But it's constant volume, so the log is zero. And so we have S3 minus S2 is equal to 0 0.00751 times 0 0.7176 times the log of 32.53 over 6.89. So I get that S3 minus S2 is 0 0.00836 and T0 del S is equal to 